The most important part of a card game is the card itself. Therefore, we need to make sure that we have a robust and clean architecture for our cards. In this video, I show you my approach for a scalable and flexible card architecture. Let's first have a look at the architecture that we will create. It will consist of three components, the view, the model and the data. The view is the representation of the card in the game world. It is all that the player can see and interact with. While the view will display the state and the date of our card, it will not halt it. The state of our card will be stored in the model instead. Or better said in the objects created from our model. The model will hold our card's current stats, modifications, effects, costs and so on. And the last component is the data. The data contains all the information for our card, like the name and the image, but also effects and stats. It contains all information needed to create a card and will be used to create our in-game card objects. While the model and the data seem similar, there are a few differences. Each card will only have one data, but with this data, multiple card objects can be created. Some from one slime card data, we could create the slime card three times. And while they all have the same stats in the beginning, the stats of one slime could be changed during play. But enough with the theory. Let's have a look on how to implement this. First, we have our card data. This script will not inherit from a mono behavior, but from scriptal object. In the script we have all data for our card. We have the sprite, the cost and the effect. And just as a side note, the effect is a string here to keep the code simple. In a real scenario, we would have to implement it in a different way. I will make a video about card effects and how to implement them soon. So make sure to follow so that you don't miss it. We also have the create asset menu attribute so that we can create instances of the data. Next, we have the card model. We call it card here. It is a plain C sharp class because we want to use it without having our card in our game world. For a deck, for example. The deck will hold our cards but will only instantiate them when they are drawn. Inside this class, we have a reference to our data. We also have a few properties. The sprite and the title will just return the sprite and the title from the data. It's fine to do that here as those things should never change. The cost and the effect on the other side can be manipulated by other cards and should not just return the values from the data. Instead, we set the initial value in the constructor. The value of this particular game object is detached from the data this way. When we change the cost of this card, we will not change the cost of all other cards that use the same data. The last thing we have is the perform effect method. In a real scenario, we would perform some effects here based on the effects in the card data. Because our effect is just a string, we just print the effect name and card cost to the console. The card view is a mono behavior. We have references to the text mesh pro components and to the sprite renderer. Like I said before, the card view will just take care of the presentation of the card and of the player interaction. We also store a reference to our card. Then we have the setup method. We have to call this method when we instantiate our card view to set it up. We pass the card object and inside we set the cost, the sprite and the title. We also implement the eye pointer click handler so that we can click the card to perform the card's effect. And again, in a real example you maybe want to perform the effect when you drop the card on a field and not on click, but to keep it simple we will perform the effect on click. We also will destroy the card when the effect was performed. That's it. This is our card architecture. I have made a small game manager script so that we can test the cards. In the game manager we create a random deck from our data and we also have the draw card method that is called by a button in our scene. 
In play mode, we can press the button and draw a card. When we click on a card, we perform the effect. Everything is connected and works fine. Now you know how to create a clean architecture for your cards. I will post more content on card game creation, so subscribe so that you don't miss it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.